It's springtime here in Austin, Texas, and that can mean only one thing. It's baseball season. And my favorite thing in the world, besides watching baseball, is to watch my youngest son come out to this field right here and throw bullets and hit dingers. So we have so much fun out here. In fact, growing up in Tampa, uh, my favorite thing in the world was going to Tampa Bay Little League and playing baseball um, year round. And I loved it. And I thought forever that um, I was gonna play baseball my entire life. My dream was to become a full-time professional baseball player. And of course that didn't happen. Um, but I was fortunate enough to be able to play high school and college baseball. But then at some point I transitioned from being a player to a coach and now I love coaching. I love coming out here and throwing batting practice um, and coaching young players, especially my kids. And kind of the same things happen in this season right now of ministry for me. I've been a pastor for 25 years and I've had some incredible experiences. But right now there's it's a new season for me and I'm transitioning from being a player um, on the front lines in church ministry to being a coach. And I feel like God's calling me to be a coach and a church consultant. 25 years of incredible experiences, um, really starting off with First Presbyterian Church of downtown Tampa. Fitz Connor, a great friend of mine, took a church downtown that at one point was 2,000 members and had dwindled down to about 100 members. And it was a church that had given birth to dozens of churches around the Bay Area, but it was on the verge of closing its doors. And so we came in there and we just said, you know, we gotta try something completely different. And the folks who were there were ready to, to do just about anything to kind of save this place. So we created a, a new environment, a contemporary service to reach people who normally don't go to church. And it was so exciting to watch what happened because within a short time, we were able to fill this gymnasium and then we filled the sanctuary. And here we are 20 years later and that church is still um, not only packed with people, but they're making a huge impact um, in the Tampa Bay area. So that was <clears throat> one of the pivotal experiences for me. And I worked with uh, a few other Presbyterian churches helping creating these same, same type of environments. And then uh, the most exciting opportunity I ever had was working with Citrus Point Church. And that was a church that I was able to be the founding pastor. And so we launched this brand new church plant in Tampa, partnering with North Point Community Church out of Atlanta and Andy Stanley. Um, and this church was a non-denominational church, so I stepped out of the Presbyterian Church, um, not for any reason other than the fact that this church aligned with the vision that God had laid on my heart um, so many years ago, that my desire has always been to create environments uh, to reach people who are far from God. And so this was a church that was completely focused on doing that. And so we had this uh, great experience starting in 2012 of creating Citrus Point Church. Uh, since then, we moved to Austin, Texas, and I've been involved with ministry um, off and on, but I feel like now I'm transitioning from being uh, a player on the field to being a coach. And I'm convinced that God doesn't want me to retire uh, and just kind of hang up my cleats, that God's given me these incredible experiences uh, to be able to pass along um, all that I've learned. Not that I know everything, but I feel like I'd be able to come in and offer a fresh set of eyes to churches that are declining and weary and tired and not sure what to do and how to get unstuck and how to grow. And so I'm creating a brand new ministry um, called Engage Church Consultants. And my focus is gonna be finding um, churches that are hurting all over the country. I'm gonna focus on the Presbyterian Church because that's the language that I speak the most. And there's 10,000 Presbyterian churches um, across the country probably 90% of them uh, would love to have some help. And so, but I'm gonna be open to any and every church, any denomination that, that wants our help. And my, my desire is to come in and, and offer a fresh set of eyes and have conversations with leadership and, and be that consultant that can help churches refocus, refresh and revitalize. And I can't wait to get started. And you know, the truth is that every church 
needs a consultant probably every two years uh, whether it's a growing church or a dying church every church should have a fresh set of eyes that come in every couple years um, in fact in the very first century when the church was in its infancy the church could have used some help in fact right when the church was getting going in acts chapter 15 we see uh, the story of where paul has been uh, evangelizing throughout the countryside i mean all over and there were churches that were popping up all over the place and many of the people who were becoming christians were people who were they called gentiles and the gentiles were just people who were far from god just your everyday people who weren't religious who weren't jewish and as great as that sounds not everyone was super happy with that in fact there was a bunch of jewish christians who um, were kind of upset and they said look they're not following the law of moses they're not doing some of the things that we've all done for years and so they kind of began to say paul that's fine if you want to reach those people far from god but they're going to have to become jewish first in fact they need to get circumcised now think about that for a second what that means they're basically saying hey you can you know jesus came to make it simple but you know if you really want to join the church you're going to have to have surgery well you can imagine that this came under sharp debate no pun intended and so what happened was you know jesus came to make this simple in churches um the religious people who were good people just began to drift away from this simple message that Jesus had. So what happened was they gathered at this big church, all church meeting. They brought leaders from all over. Uh, the most important religious leaders came together and they started talking about, well, what is it that we want these new converts, these new Gentiles, these people who are far from God, what do we really want for them to do? And as they're discussing James, the brother of Jesus. Imagine this, the brother of Jesus. I mean, what would it take for you to believe that your brother is the Messiah? So this guy must have, I mean, he really believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And so James, the brother of Jesus, stands up and he says, It is my opinion, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for those who are far from God to turn to Jesus. And that verse, Acts chapter 15, verse 19, has become not only a foundational verse in my life, but for this new ministry that God's called me to. I think churches uh, all across the country uh, have just created sideways energy and they've just gotten busier and busier and they've kind of complicated things more and drifted away from the simple message that Jesus brought and so I'm hoping that I can use this foundational verse of Acts chapter 15, verse 19, to help come in and help churches refocus, refresh, and revitalize. And it's, mm. it's a live show, there's a What can be better than this? Not my lunch. Seriously, what can be better than partnering with churches all over the country in this next season of ministry for me? I can't think of anything I'd rather do than to help churches that are struggling and that are weary to move forward. There is one thing that makes us even better. This is like the sweetest part of this whole idea that God's called me to. Here's the deal. Churches all over the country that are dying and declining and weary, they don't have money to spend $5,000, $10,000 on consultants. And so they're using that money just to keep the doors open for self-preservation. So what I'm proposing is to provide a subsidized model so that I can come in uh, for a fraction of the cost of what it would cost a normal consultant to come in and make it super affordable for every church that wants to have a fresh set of eyes to come in and help. And so my, my plan is to subsidize it by taking donations and support from friends and family all over the country, uh, from Maryland to Atlanta to Tampa to Dunedin and right here to Austin. Hopefully all my friends will jump on board and be a part of what God's doing in this new ministry I call Engage Church Consultants. So the way that you can help is to partner with me for $15.19 a month. You might be like, well, why $15.19? Remember Acts chapter 15, verse 19, when James, the brother of Jesus, 
He says, my opinion, therefore, that we should not make it difficult for those who are far from God, who are turning to Jesus. And so I want to help churches simplify. I want to help churches clarify, refocus, and refresh, and revitalize. But do it on a subsidized model so that every church can afford to do this. At the end of this video, you have the opportunity to click on the donate button down below. You can give 15, 19 a month. You can do 50 a month. You can do $5 a month. Whatever you can do to help out, I would love for you to partner with me and pray with me um, for this for this new season. Thanks for listening, and I just pray that God blesses you this day. And I'm going to go back and enjoy my lunch with my daughter Meg. I want to say thank you to everyone who's helping to make this a reality. I want to, I want to thank uh, my board of directors, Stuart Bertrand, Fitz Connor, Raina Lett, Norman Giovanko, and my best friend Raina Lett, Chuck Allen, their support, and also my daughter Meg, who is behind the camera right now videotaping her. She's so creative and I'm so grateful. And for all the people here in Austin, for my uh, life group at Life Austin, who supported me over the past couple years um, for my new church that I'm helping out, Live Oak Church in Leander for Kaz. And I want to thank Fitz and Kathy just for their lifelong support as my pastors and my friends uh, who love me no matter what over the decades. And to my, all my children, Maggie and Meg and Cody and Cade, this is getting silly now. <laughs> <laughs>